first thing we're talking about no crank slow crank all right this is one scenario and of the three and this is the one that um, is very often referred to as won't start won't do nothing won't turn over all right so we have to understand that there's a cranking system and the starter that everybody calls a starter is actually technically referred to officially as the cranking motor all right so it's really not a starter to be perfectly honest I know that sounds a little stupid but that's what this is this is a cranking motor it's determined and it's just it's designed to crank the engine now the reason for that is because in the old days if you remember maybe you do maybe you don't but in the old days cars had cranks right up here right okay At a crank. And this crank is what we did to start the engine. Okay? So that's why it's called a cranking motor. And that's all it does, of course, is it all it does is turn over the engine. And in the case of a modern engine, we use electricity and a battery and so forth. <coughs> so if we have a no crank or slow crank situation, the only systems involved are going to be the cranking motor and the cranking motor circuits. Multiple circuits to make the cranking motor turn. Okay. Now, we need to make sure that um, we limit our thinking to this system when we are trying to figure out why it doesn't crank and we don't get involved in a lot of other things. No crank, slow crank. The reason I put question marks is because which one is it, right? We don't want to just go out there and assume something. We want to make sure we know what we're doing. All right, so what's involved in the cranking system? Uh, fairly straightforward. I'm going to start <coughs> on the, um, the output end with what actually does the work, and then I'm going to work backwards and illustrate how this all works. So somewhere on the engine, obviously, there is a cranking motor. Okay, and that cranking motor, depending upon the size of the vehicle, could be pretty huge, as we know. All right, so there's the cranking motor. I'll come back and label these in a little bit. All right, then we got batteries, obviously. And these batteries are going to be critical to this process because the batteries have to be correct. All right, well, let's talk about this from the standpoint of a circuit. Well, we've got power. And we've got a ground, more than likely right here, where it's chassis ground somewhere. And we have to have a load, which is here the motor, because this is a motor. That's all it is, is motor, nothing special. And we have to have a switch. Well, the switch is here inside the starting solenoid, because it's called a solenoid, but it's also a relay, and it's a switch as well. And then, of course, we have to have circuits. So we have to have wiring. Okay, So the battery, some point, somewhere, somehow, is going to be connected to ground and then we're going to have a a cable and there's our circuit that's the first circuit the circuit one is the cranking motor circuit okay so the cranking motor circuit consists of power in the form of a battery ground in the form of a vehicle chassis ground coming off the starter somewhere load the motors the load and a switch and the switch is inside the starting solenoid or starter solenoid and this is actually the uh, the switch that turns the the motor all right well how do we close that switch well we have to have another circuit okay so now here's this other circuit well we have to have a coil of wire inside the solenoid 
and that coil of wire energizes, produces a magnetic field, and closes those contacts. Okay? Well, usually it's grounded to the chassis the same way that the starter is. All right. Now we have power. So we have power and a ground and a load. So where's the switch? Well, the switch is usually inside the start relay. Okay? And the start relay has a switch and the start relay has a coil of wire. Okay? So relays have two circuits. So what do we do? Well, we have to have a fuse panel. So let's put a fuse panel up here somewhere. All right. And let's put a fuse up here. There's a fuse. There's another fuse. All right. Well, somewhere along the way, the battery is going to provide energy to the fuses, right? Battery fuses. There you go. Okay. So, so what happens? Well, we have to have the key switch. So, there's a key switch here. And there's a switch inside the key. So let me see what we've got here. We've got the battery, the cranking motor, the switch that turns the cranking motor on, power and ground. Okay, we've got power. Now here's a coil we need to switch. So, hmm. Well, what's going to happen here is that the switch for the solenoid is the relay, is the start relay. And the power comes off the power for the fuse. All right, well, now we have to, wait a minute, now we have to turn this switch on. And we do that with uh, this coil, because that coil closes that switch. And when that switch closes, that coil energizes. When that coil energizes, that switch closes. When that switch closes, that motor turns. So we have to have the, we have the key. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the key and um, we'll use this. So it's going to come off the key and power to the key. And then the key will come over here and power up that relay. And then that relay has a ground somewhere. Right, now this is getting kind of confusing, I admit, okay? But I'm going to show you something in a second. Wow, that's pretty crazy. All right, let me do a little labeling here to make sure you understand what we're dealing with. All right, so we're going to start here, obviously. Here's the battery. All right, here's a ground. That's where the battery connects to the ground. Here's the starter ground for the starter. Here's the cranking motor. Here's the starter solenoid. But there's two things inside the starter solenoid. There's the coil, and there's the contacts, right? Wow, this is getting a little crazy here. Hmm. All right, now we have the start relay. But the start relay has contacts. Hmm, wow. And the start relay has a coil. Yikes. Then we have the key switch, obviously. have to have that. All right. Let's see. Then we have fuses. You know what? But we could have... Wow, I didn't even see this. This is crazy. We could also have a transmission neutral switch. And we could have anti-lock and we could... I mean, uh, anti-theft and have a lot of different things. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, possibly ten... Oh boy, possibly 10 things. Okay, but there's a 10 things that could fail in here, but there's something else you have to understand and this is really really important, really 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 important. You have to remember that no matter what you think, 80% 80% of the 
of faults are in the wires. There's a lot of wire here, right? Lots of wire, right? So the components fail 20%, the wires fail 80%. So before you get into the parts changing mode, all right, we're going to want to do tests. We're not going to do parts changing. This is not a parts changing exercise, okay? You don't want to be a parts changer. You want to be an electrical diagnostician. So no parts changing. Now I'm going to redraw this for you to make it look a heck of a lot easier to explain much more simply how it works. 